Welcome to the Destination Asia and the South Pacific Travel Show. Asia is the world's most populous continent and is home to more than 2,770 languages. Asian cuisine most often refers to East Asian foods. Asian cuisine can be broken down into several regional styles that have come from the cultures of those regions. Some of the largest daily climate changes occur in Asia. Tropical cyclones occur during any month of the year. The continent's culture is commonly divided into geographic regions. Those languages belong to 4 billion people who live in the continent. For an example, East Asia and South Asia might have totally different customs than each other. Oil and industry are the leading providers of the wealth in Asia. The South Pacific is also called Australasia and the Oceania. Now that you've had a brief introduction to Asia and the South Pacific, sit back and enjoy the destination Asia and South Pacific. To escape the horrors of the Vietnam War, the Nguyen family decides to move from a dry and humid Saigon to a bitter and icy cold Michigan. The memoir tells of Beach's struggles fitting into Grand Rapids, Michigan in an amusing way for all ages. Like all kids, Beach struggles to fit into her new community. However, the difference between Beach and every other kid is that she is from another country. This means she must try to fit into an American society while still holding on to her Vietnamese culture. For example, when Beach attends second grade, many of the Vietnamese refugees change their name from Vietnamese names to American names in order to fit in. Beach feels the need to do this, but her desires are rejected by her stepmother, Rosa. Her name is often mispronounced, and instead of Beach, she is called a synonym for a female dog. Miss Wynn humorously yet fully captures the obstacles that come with being an outsider. Beach wins, stealing Buddha's dinner, helps us realize that we are not alone in the journey of coming of age, and that clearly some of us have more difficult obstacles than others. He has been having nightmares, but the shaking was for real. An earthquake had occurred. Sarah's father was yelling at the family to escape the vacation boat, the dream catcher, and run away from the water that was headed straight toward them. This is how the town looks after the tsunami. While Ruslan heads to another village to find his father, he sees and rescues Sarah and Peter from a skiff that was about to capsize. They are both looking for their parents. Could they be alive? Within hours of the tsunami, Sarah buries her mother and then finds her brother, Peter, who desperately needs medical attention. First hand, they experience the disaster full force as they witness trucks dumping bodies into death pits. Will 
they ever get back to their normal lives? Will Ruslan ever get back to his house with his father? Will Sarah find Peter the medical attention he needs? Polly Evans embarks on her long journey across present-day China, beginning in Beijing and ending in Hong Kong. Her humorous trip through many extravagant cities, towns, and villages provides both entertainment and information of China and its culture. Being a foreigner from England, Polly is faced with many difficulties along the way, including long claustrophobic bus rides, suspicious-looking dumplings, excruciatingly painful kung fu stretches. To summarize her journey, Polly explains, eating fried eggs with chopsticks bears small-scale similarities to the greater trials of traveling around China as a foreigner. It is frustrating, frequently ludicrous, you look ridiculous, and small tasks take infinitely longer than they should. But in the end, pride shattered, patience tried, and seemingly against all odds, you do arrive. And then someone comes along smiling and points out the easier route you should have taken. Although her frustration is obvious, Polly's determination and will pushes her through the difficult times. In the end, she arrives at her final destination, having acquired much knowledge of Chinese culture and traditions. Arn is a young boy who makes a living out of selling ice cream in this town. If he doesn't sell all the ice cream by the end of the day, he has to eat it all. One day, the Khmer Rouge march into Arn's town and split the townspeople by age and gender and turn them into slaves. The soldiers of the Khmer Rouge beat the townspeople and even kill them if they are lazy, foreign, or sick for their own safety. Arn joins a band that plays while the Khmer Rouge kill people. In the band, he plays the instrument called the Kahim. With his position in the band, Arn can get out of life-threatening positions and often takes the blame for others' mistakes so they can stay alive. He is becoming too safe with his position and is sometimes testing the soldiers. He sees people being killed every day and one day sees people being killed by the Khmerus cutting open their body and taking out the liver and heart. Arn wonders every day how and when he's going to get out. 